it's not necessarily worth the money and the time component spent on that. One of the most common questions I get asked is, do you need a master's in data science or analytics to get a job in data science, machine learning, and all of those fields? Well, the answer I really wish was as simple as yes or no, but unfortunately I have to keep talking for a while. And the reason for that is there's so many different variables that come into play for if you in particular should get a master's in data science. You don't necessarily need one, but there's a huge caveat here. There are particular jobs where you need both a master's and PhD, and although you might have heard stories about people bypassing these things. There are jobs that don't require a master's and there are jobs that do require a master's. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and the alike companies, a lot of them do require, if you're going to machine learning, get a master's and sometimes even a PhD to even be as a minimum requirement. But most people don't want to work at those companies. At least most people don't think they're able to work at those companies. The reality is millions of jobs in data science analytics do not require a master's. Okay, so is the answer there? No, okay, that's not it. There is so many more factors here, how much education you have and what the education is in. So let's talk about education. If you have gone to an undergrad or you got an undergrad degree and you're considering doing a master's, you have to think about if your education really geared you towards that subject or not. If you are, for example, I see a lot, mechanical engineer, where you know you understand engineering concepts, physics, calculus, all of the mathy type stuff, a lot of that transfers over to easily learning data science because it's still going to be calculus and linear algebra, but there's a huge statistics portion you probably wouldn't have done before. Even if you've done computer science and all the programming stuff, if you haven't quite done statistics, you're going to be missing a lot of information there. And so will that master's give you that piece of information and the credibility that you need to move forward? Sort of yes, sort of no. You definitely need to really understand machine learning and deep learning no matter what. Unless you already have on your resume some sort of credibility towards specifically machine learning and data Data science, computer science, you know, some might argue that it is depending on what you do. Unless it is really like statistics, that is what underlies all of machine learning. And so it's difficult to prove to an interviewer that you are a data scientist unless you have credibility in that specific area. So a master's 100% is a way to prove you are good at this and this university puts you through the test. They know that you're good enough. Really, really good choice for sure. But it's not necessarily worth the money and the time component spent on that. You won't have too much hands-on work with actually applying deep learning models, making ML models, which is what, if you jump into a company, that's what they're gonna be doing. That's what they want you to be able to do is yes, understand all the theory about model training and statistics, but then definitely straight up apply 10 lines of TensorFlow code that make a model that makes sense for their application, whatever it is, forecasting, natural language processing, computer vision, regression, all these different problems. So no matter what, whether you choose a master's or not, I think it's a really good option, but I would recommend doing all the Coursera stuff linked down below because that gets you the hands-on work. It also kind of gets you the credibility, kind of lacking in total credibility. And so right now for me, I'm totally okay with not getting a master's because my undergrad is in statistics. From those courses, they know that I have the theory and from the University of Waterloo, which I'll get to in a moment about how credible a specific university is, but they know for sure that just from that piece of paper from UW, University of Waterloo, it says that I know this stuff. Okay, so I'm okay with not getting a master's because I've already proved that and I have the Coursera knowledge to put that on my resume and say these are the skills that I know these are the projects that I've done and online portfolio is huge which I'll talk about after this next section so this section is going to be about the credibility of your university if you're watching this you probably have an undergrad or you're thinking about doing a master's you probably know already how credible your university is you might not know the exact ranking in some particular paper that was published don't worry too much about those rankings although if you don't have a clue then they're a good place to start. There is some universities and colleges that are very well known. If you are from one of those colleges or universities and you've done, you know, even applied like statistics, if you have a statistics degree or an engineering computer science, that's more likely. If you have done that, but the credibility is not quite there from the University of College, that is when you definitely might want to get a master's. It's okay if you don't get one of the super top ones. Of course, I'll list off, I've been asked the question many times, what are the best ones? So I will list off the popular universities that I 
I know and that many people would consider as awesome. In North America, we mainly think about University of British Columbia, McGill, University of Waterloo, or Toronto. If I missed one, I'm sorry for that. Down south in the USA, uh, the many popular ones like Stanford, MIT, Caltech. If you don't have the credibility from one of those universities already in an undergrad, which is most likely, it definitely wouldn't hurt to spend a year or two and come over here or do it online if you can. I think you have to come here for everything now. Get that master's degree, and that'll really help you out if you want a job in these countries, okay? It's gonna be very, very difficult to get a job from outside if you are not already tied to it in some particular way. And that's where connections come in. You should start emailing professors and seeing how you can help them for free and make connections if you want to get here. In general, it's hard to get through without having some sort of credibility from here as well. And Coursera is definitely one way to show off in data science and machine learning. I would definitely get the Coursera certificates to show that you know the stuff to really learn what you're doing, get that. But if you are from you know a different country here, it's difficult to get in without having a tie already. So so to summarize that information, it's mostly if you have both a credible university and college in a very relevant data science machine learning field, then you probably don't need to do a master's. But if you are either from a not credible college or university, or you're from a credible one where it's not that related to data science and machine learning, then you may want to consider a master's. But either way, I would highly recommend getting the Coursera certificates that companies really know here. This next section is all about portfolio because you really need to show on your resume somehow. Yes, you need the credibility like from an undergrad or master's or just a bunch of really awesome certificates online might get you by. But the combination of both is awesome, although, this still isn't good enough unless you have an awesome online portfolio. What an awesome portfolio is, instead of a crappy one that most people have, to be honest, is they're flexing some like a couple projects that aren't that good. You need to be really, really interesting. And to do that, you need to have some massive online portfolio, which doesn't necessarily, you know, be come up first in search, you know, it doesn't need to be fantastic worldwide and known, but it needs to be a couple projects for sure that you've worked on that are really, really fantastic and not MNIST handwritten digits or the Titanic data set or doing a couple neural networks. No, make a huge application that does something awesome, whether it's on your phone, whether it is 50 YouTube videos, articles that you've written, or if it's a research paper that you've published, you need to stand out like this unless you both both show the credibility from a school and you have a project or two or three or 50 on your online portfolio they can look at and see that you're you and you're unique, then even a master's, you might have difficulty getting a job and standing out. I hope that helped you out and subscribe.